YouTube, what's up with your boy, Sports and Fitness Rants, I'm back guys, click that like button, subscribe to my channel, what's up y'all, welcome back, and welcome to a live edition, it's the 20th edition, that's right guys, episode 20, part 20, whatever you want to call it guys, that's what it is man, we are going live man, with LeBron James fans say weird things, I told you guys, for the 20th edition, I promised you, that we were going to do a live, that's what we were going to do, and that's what it is right now, man. Shout out to all you guys, man. Shout out to all you guys, man. We're going to do it live. I'm going to wait, man, and, and wait for some more people to come in. May we get some more people to come in. Shout out to all you guys that are already there. My man, Arthur Alvaridian, what up, man? We're about to do it, man. We're going to wait for a couple more people to come in. Yes, sir, my man, Primetime Henry. What's up, baby? Thank you very much, man. Shout out to all you guys out there, man. Renee43, what's up? Naveen, what's going on, baby? Yes, Canada's in the house. Calgary, shout out to you guys out there. Much respect. Ed Huff, what's going on, man? Thank you to all you guys out there, man. Much respect. Yes, sir, man. Mars Blackman, my man Spike Lee, my man Michael Jordan. That's right, guys. We're going to be doing that. LeBron James fans say weird things. I told you guys, part 20, guys. I'm going to wait a couple more minutes, maybe like 10 or four, uh, maybe like five minutes. I'll wait a couple more minutes for some people to come in, and then I'll start reading off some of the comments. <laughs> you know we must continue to do this, my man Sickum Savage. What's up? Shout out to all you guys out there in the comments, man. Yes, sir, man. We about to get this party started, man. You guys know what it is, man. Once again, it's the same thing every time I'm telling you guys, right? The same kind of comments. They never have any, ed no education, right? Nothing in the comments to dispute the videos or anything that I'm saying in these videos. Once again, it's the emotional responses from the LeBron James fan club, guys. And that's what it's always been, man. So I'm going to wait a couple more minutes for some people to come in. And then we'll, we'll start, man. We'll get, this, we'll get this show on the road, man. Your boy, Key, what up, man? Yes, sir, to all you guys. Yo, to much respect to all you guys out there, for real, man. All the true basketball fans, all the supporters of my channel, guys. I am truly, truly humble, guys, by all the support, man. But, you know, I can't even believe that we're on part 20, guys. I cannot believe it. Like I said, guys, we must continue to do this. We must continue to set the record straight. Stop the lies. Stop the narratives, y'all. You guys know that. We must continue to stop these guys from rewriting the history. Stop them from bending reality. And, of course, these things are for educational purposes. That's what it's always been about, man, for real. Yo, BW, what up, man? Thank you for coming through once again. Yes, sir. Lionel Jones, what up, man? Thank you, guys. Story Games, what's good? Shout out to all you guys in the chat, man. King Meek, what up, man? Yeah, I'm going to wait a couple more minutes, guys, and then I'm going to start reading some of these comments because, you know, guys, it, it, it's always something weird, guys. It, it never ceases to, to amaze me, the things that I hear, the things that are said to me. Uh, I mean, you guys don't even know, man, some of the things that these people write. It, it's ridiculous, man. And it's it, you'll have, like, one person. I have, like, ten comments back to back to back. And, and all they do is just talk trash, nonsensical things. I don't know basketball. You know what I'm saying? The 90s was this. The 90s was that. Michael Jordan this. Michael Jordan that. But no one ever has the facts, right? They tell me I don't know basketball. But when I go to their channels, they don't have no damn videos up talking about basketball. So then how could you tell me that I don't know basketball if you don't have anything on your channel talking about basketball? You must show and prove, man. You must show and prove. All right, out here in the YouTube streets, man. You can't be out here just telling me I don't know the game, but you ain't got no videos up talking about the game. Get out of here with that nonsense. Yo, shout out to all you guys. Manukin, what up, man? Straight to the point, sports and entertainment. What's good, baby? That's right. They, they're always crying, man. They're always crying about something, always getting emotional. And that's why we was going to do part 20. I told you guys we were going to do a part 20. And, I, and this is the trusty book, y'all. This, tr this is like, you know, the book of Job or something, man. This is the book of the Cry Baby, the fan club members. This is them, man. I must continue to write these things down. That's what it's all about. Yo, Jordan LaVersa Bond, what up, man? Yo, keep doing your thing. Yo, Jim, what's up, baby? Self-research NBA facts, man. <laughs> yes. We are going live to read off some of the comments. I've told you guys we were going to do the 20th edition live, man. I told you this, guy. It's a celebration because we must continue to set the record straight. I told you to educate. So, you know, without further ado, let's let's get this show on the road here. And, and we'll start off with the first comment from, you know, the weird things that the you know LeBron James fan club say, right? So the first, the first comment, it says, pure hate exists rent-free. That's the comment. That's literally the comment. Pure hate exists rent-free. Now, 
Let, let's let's unpack this now. Now we've talked about this before, y'all. Shout out to everybody in the chat. But we've talked about this before. When people try to say or equate my channel or what I'm ever doing on this channel as hate, when people say he says pure hate exists, I've told you once again, whatever world you're living in, I want to live there. Because if you're doing if, if if what I'm doing on this channel equates to pure hate to you, then there must be nothing but sunshine and rainbows wherever you are, man. Everything must be great. Because to me, once again, I told you, all I'm doing here is educating. All I'm doing here is setting the record straight. This has never been about hate. There is no hate here. So once again, please, all you fan club members out there, please stop equating what I'm talking about here to hate. Remember, the facts can never be hate, y'all. Remember that. The facts can never be hate. It never can be hate. This is why it's called setting the record straight. That's exactly what that means. It's all about the facts. See, I've told you, everything that I'm telling you guys can be verified through the video footage. These are the facts of the NBA's history. I'm not making up the stuff, man, okay? And then this other thing, he says, rent free. See, this is a new a new thing that a lot of the, you know, the LeBron James fan club members, they love to say to a lot of us smaller YouTube channels. They love to make it seem as if we need LeBron James' name to what? To make money or to get views. So they love to use this term, rent-free. He's living, you're living rent-free in his head, blah, 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 blah. No, once again, I told you guys, I'm living rent-free in y'all heads, man. This is why you guys are constantly on my channel. Because either you guys want the education but don't want to admit to the education, right? You want to try to deny the education, right? I'm trying to give it to you here for free, but you don't want it. And then you, once again, you try to say that rent-free. I'm living rent-free, y'all. He's living rent-free in my head. I don't think about LeBron James outside of the videos that I'm doing. And once again, I've told you guys, until they stop talking about Michael Jordan, the Nick Wrights, the Shannon Sharps, all these clowns on ESPN, these fools with their podcasts, everyone must always bring up Michael Jordan. And when they're talking about Michael Jordan, they're not being accurate. They're not giving you the facts. And until they stop that nonsense, I'm going to continue to make these videos. I'm going to continue to set the record straight, stop the lies, stop the narratives, and stop these fools from rewriting history. All right? And y'all need to get on board with this stuff. It ain't about rent-free nothing. Once again, y'all on my channel right now. So who is rent-free? I don't even know. Once again, man, you people are just idiots, man. I told you, the LeBron James fan, I'm telling you right now, these people are some of the stupidest people I've ever come encountered with in my life. They can never dispute your video. It always goes to some random thing. Pure hate exists and rent-free? This is what you got from the video? Come on, man. Get out of here. Stupid. Let's go to the next one, right? Let's go to the next one over here. All right? Then this is this and this is what I'm talking about right here. The next one. This one. Yo, shout out to all you guys in the chat, man. I'm, I'm rambling on, man. For real, man. Doogie Bear, TB, Chirac, Maybach. Yo, recipes with Reed. My man Louis Hidalgo. Yo, yo, Mr. One Up. Yo, uh, Key 10 or uh, 30 or uh, 311. Yo, shout out to all you guys out there, man. I'm, I'm rambling on, man. We're gonna go to the next one, though. All right, and this is what I'm talking about. 90% of your videos are about LeBron James. How much hate do you have in your heart? This is the comment. 90% of my videos about LeBron James. Now listen, once again, the LeBron James fan club, y'all need to keep the facts the fact. You guys can't even have the facts as it pertains to your comments. Nothing is factual. You're trying to diss me by saying 90% of my videos are about LeBron James. That's nowhere near accurate. Nowhere near accurate. Let's just, let's just go off the accuracy of the numbers you're nowhere near this, okay? I have over 700 videos on health and fitness. Over 700, okay? So once again, right there, that proves to you that almost, what, 40% of my channel has to do with health and fitness, okay? I probably have more videos on how to not take the elevator over the stairs than I do about LeBron James because once again, these are not LeBron James videos. What are we doing here? We're stopping the lies and the narrative surrounding LeBron James. These are not LeBron James videos. This is not a hit on LeBron James. We're saying the record straight. If these fools would stop talking trash about the past errors to make someone like LeBron James and these other clowns look greater than they really are, I, once again, I told you, we wouldn't be here having to make these videos. We wouldn't have to do this. But because these fools want to continue to bend reality and try to change the narrative all of a sudden, like, like we didn't watch this stuff growing up, they're going to keep doing this stuff, then once again, we must continue to do this stuff ourselves. So when you talk about 90% of my videos, you're, you're way off base. But even if 90% of my videos were about LeBron James and the facts, why does that bother you? It bothers you because I'm hitting y'all with the facts. This is why y'all don't like this. This is why some of these channels are coming up now. Because people are starting to open their eyes. 
And they understand what these guys are telling them on the mainstream media is not matching up to what they're watching. It's not. Those are the facts, man. Yo, shout out to all you guys out there, man. For real, everybody out in the chat. Yo, Knowledge One, thank you very much. Shout out for all you guys, man. I'm going to go to the next comment. These people, I'm getting, I'm getting upset already. But you see, it's the same stuff, guys. They didn't dispute anything in my videos, man. Just talking about hate in your heart. How much hate do you have in your heart? What do you mean? How much hate? You know what I hate? I hate liars. That's what I hate. I hate liars. And all these guys are doing on TV is lying. They're literally lying. It, it's grown-ups lying about grown-ups. What, what are we doing here? What is this, first grade? Everyone's a liar. And everyone's okay with that? We're supposed to accept this stuff. And these guys are making money off the lies. Come on, man. You know what else I hate? I hate bullies, man. And these guys are bullies. They're straight bullies. They're trying to bully us out of here, out of YouTube, all this stuff. And they want to fill your head with lies and narratives. So two of the things that I hate most in the world, liars and bullies, is what we're dealing with here. This is what we're dealing with. And you guys are okay with this? See, this is what I'm saying when I talk about the LeBron James fans. All right? What I'm saying is these are the people who do not hold LeBron James responsible for his actions, accountable for his actions. They never do. They never hold him to the standard of the all-time greats. He's an all-time great. He should be held to the standard of an all-time great. But his fans don't want to do that. All they want to do is give excuses and point the finger at the other errors. And they want to point the finger at Michael Jordan and all these other guys. It's laughable, guys. Laughable. Let's go to the next one, number three. Oh, this one is great. This is great. Take your hat off and wax your unibrow. That's the comment, y'all. Take your hat off and wax your unibrow. This is what I come, this is what I get from the LeBron James fan club. They tell me to take my hat off and wax my unibrow. I, I, what do you say to that? What do you say to that? The, I, that has nothing to do with basketball. Literally nothing, nothing. I know in my video I wasn't talking about getting my eyebrows waxed. See, once again, they <laughs> guys, man, uh, we're waxing, we're waxing our eyebrows now. See where we see where they go with it? We're waxing eyebrows now. Right? Take my hat off and wax my eyebrows. So apparently I must look. Maybe I'm attracting these people, man. They're attracted to me. Maybe he, if I wax my eyebrow, then this guy want to date me or something, man. I, I don't know what you're getting at when you tell me to take my hat off and wax my eyebrow. This is weird, man. All right? Do I have to get my wife over here, man? Like, what's going on here, man? This is just getting weird. Once again, man, uh, what does it have to do with my videos? See what I'm saying, guys? That's why the title of this series is called LeBron James Fans Say Weird Things. Weird things. Not stupid things or dumb things. Right? Right? They don't say, not educational things. It's weird things that they say to take my hat off and wax my unibrow. This is where we're at. These are the LeBron James fans, y'all. These, the, these are his fans. This is why the NBA is, is not popular. These people who make those kinds of comments, they're not watching the games. You think that person is actually watching the games? No. This is why this man has 200 followers on social media. But meanwhile, ain't, ain't 200 million people watching the NBA. It's laughable, man. Yo, Hayden Fiends, what's up, man? Shout out to all you guys. My man, Rob West, what up? Yo, for real, guys. You see what I'm saying? Guys are stupid, man. Let's go to the next one because, once again, it's weirder now. Now we're getting a little bit weirder, guys. We're going to go off the deep end here. All right, next one here. This one says, you on stimulants. Calm down, bro. All right, now, guys, see? See, this is what I'm saying. You see how they went off the deep end with that? I'm on stimulants now. I'm on stimulants. Wait, so y'all don't want to talk about LeBron James and all his accusations, all the suspicions surrounding LeBron James, but you want to accuse me of being on stimulants because I got some hyper energy up according to you because I'm loud, because I'm boisterous, so to speak. All of a sudden now, I have to be on stimulants. These are the LeBron James fans, man. These are the LeBron James fans. Once again, we have gone into the abyss here. We are completely off into the abyss. We're in the deep end right now. These dudes are asking me if I'm on stimulants. Calm, calm down, fool. Calm, it wasn't even fool. It was fool with F-O-O. -O. That's how he spelt it. Calm down, fool. Because I'm on stimulants. Because I'm out here telling the truth. <laughs> spitting facts out here, y'all. And, and I'm too loud, apparently, for some of y'all soft, sensitive ears. 
once again, the soft feminine LeBron James fans, they, they get a little bit upset when they see a grown man getting hyped up, you know, on camera. They can't deal with that kind of energy. They want some more estrogen. We have to pump some estrogen up in their butts. This guy told me I'm off stimulus. See, once again, they're accusing me of being on drugs, but they don't want to talk about LeBron James. No one wants to talk about LeBron James. I don't see any of his fans making videos about LeBron James' suspicions, the drugs he's on, when it's more, it's, it's obviously that he's on something. How is it obvious that I'm on, I have to be on drugs now? Come on, man. I was, see, you see what I'm saying? We equate people having energy and someone being, <laughs> to be, I'm on, I'm on stimulants now. These are the LeBron James fans. Yo, shout out to all you guys, man. For real. It, it, it's, like I said, it's gone completely off the rails, guys. I've told you. Think about where we're at now. I have to shave my, I have to wax my unibrow. And now I'm on drug, I'm on stimulants now. This is what I'm on. It gets crazy, guys. Let's go to the next one, man. These people, they, they said they've lost their minds. Let's go to the next one. It's the same thing. LeBron James is the foundation of your channel. You should thank that man. Now, listen, we all know that LeBron James should be thanking Michael Jordan, right? But does he thank Michael Jordan? No, he doesn't. We all know that LeBron James and a lot of these players right now, what they've been able to accomplish with all this money that they get now, they should be thanking Michael Jordan. So when you tell me that I should be thanking LeBron James, for what? For, for my knowledge? For me telling the facts here? Because I'm like, once again, you guys are making this about LeBron James. These videos are not about LeBron James. These videos happen to do with LeBron James, but it's about the facts. It's about setting the record straight. I told you once again, damn it, if these fools would stop trying to bend reality and rewrite the history that I watched growing up, I'm not standing for this. If they would stop doing this, then we wouldn't be here. We literally would not be here if these guys would keep their integrity, right, and carry themselves and respect the history of the game. These guys don't want to give you their, their education. I told you, man, they're not here for that anymore. Back in the day, man, you turned on ESPN, you turned on some of these places, you listened to the games. They educated you on the game, on the history of the game. They always gave you the context, the historical context. Now, all that's gone because what are they doing? They've taken the historical context out of the game because all they continue to do is tear down the history of the game. So... If the history of the game is garbage, if everything that came before all these guys that are now was trash, then what are these guys standing on? They're not standing on anything. How can they be this great if the people who came from for them were not great? What are you being judged against? You're being judged against nothing. Absolutely nothing. So we can't allow this. These guys understand that. They don't understand that. They make it about LeBron James and my channel. And once again, why do they do that? Because everything with the LeBron James fans equates to what? Money. In their mind, they believe I'm here for the money. They believe I'm here for the fame. Because they know that's what they care about. That's what LeBron James cares about. He's all about the money and the fame. So in their minds, they can't believe that someone would actually be out here doing this just to do it for the truth. For the truth. If it was anybody else that... Or, I've called out many players on this channel. Once again, when the narratives are there, we will set them straight. That's what it's always been about. And it's never been about the money or the fame. I don't give a damn. Tell me to keep the facts the facts. That's what it's always been about. Shout out to all you guys, man, for real. Everybody in the chat, man, I'm sorry I'm not interacting with you guys too much in the chat right now. I want to read these comments off first. Because once again, guys, we're on part 20 now. It's a celebration, part 20, the LeBron James fans say weird things. These people are a bunch of idiots. They're a bunch of clowns. You've heard the weird things that they've said to me already on here. It makes no sense. Nothing basketball related. It's all a bunch of nonsensical statements. It's continuing the same thing that you hear over and over again. Right? These guys don't know. Let's go to the next one. Oh, this one is good. Matumbo not even going to play that much in this era. LMAO. They always got to finish it off with the LMAO because they feel they got me, right? Like, oh, Matumbo. You know, they, they got me on that one. And that's funny. That they say that Matumbo wouldn't play in this era. So that comment actually came off the video that I did when they said, uh, I said, we done with the 90s defensive play the year award edition. And in that video, I mentioned guys like the Kembe Matumbo and other great defensive players of the 90s versus the great defensive players of the 2010s into the 2020s. So for this person who tell me that the Kembe Matumbo would not play 
in this era is laughable at best once again because when we talk about the standard and we talk about guys from past eras, and I've told you, the guys from the past eras, the Defensive Player of the Year Award winners that were in those eras, a lot of those guys won another level. So when we think about the Kembe Matumbo and we compare him to a Rudy Gobert, let's say, for example, if Rudy Gobert can play in this era of NBA and win all those Defensive Player of the Year Awards that he's won in this era and get paid all the money that he gets paid in this era, then Dikembe Mutombo would be just fine in this era. He would be fantastic. Once again, the thing about Dikembe Mutombo that he had that really people don't mention or think about if they're idiots like these people are is the instincts and the timing of a Dikembe Mutombo, right? So when people talk about being a shot blocker and things of that nature, Dikembe Mutombo, once again, is one of the elite shot blockers in the history of the game when he was in an era where guys challenged you constantly in those eras, you had to earn that reputation of being a shot blocker back in them days. Okay? You had to earn that reputation. In these days, I'm not trying to knock Rudy Gobert or anything like that. What I'm saying is, if Rudy Gobert can play in this era and be effective at that level, once again, why is that? Because he's not being challenged as much in this era. What are the other great big men that Rudy Gobert is going against? Dikembe Mutombo is going against some of the greatest centers in the history of the game. We're talking about the Hakeem Olajuwans and the Alonzo Mornings, the Patrick Ewings, right? He's going against all these kinds of guys, man. The David Robinsons, right? The Rick Smiths, all these guys. The Kim Tone will be great in this era. So once again, this is when these people expose themselves. Yo, shout out to all you guys. Oh, yo, my man Lord Rod coming through. My man, my man Lord Rod always coming through, man, with the super chat. Thank you very much, man. It's all about integrity, legacy, and the truth. That's right, Lord Rod. That's what's always been about in this channel, man. A lot of people, they don't understand and they don't respect those values. They don't hold those values dear to them, right? They don't even know about these things, right? They don't, they're going to spell integrity. They don't know about that. So shout out to you, Lord Rod, man. Oh, you came came through twice. My man came through with another one. I think, uh, they think Ball Ball is better than Manu Ball was. That's what I'm saying, man. See, these guys, when they talk about the skills that some of these players had, man, and we're talking about the Dikembe Mutombo, a Manu Ball, uh, a Ball Ball, you know, for example. Manu Ball, man, like I said, this dude was doing all kinds of things out there with those long arms. Like I said, the instincts of a Manu Ball. This guy, Manu Ball, hit like what, like six, seven, three-pointers in a game one time? I, I, yo, man, these guys, like I said, man, someone look at Dikembe Mutombo, some of these other guys. Yo, shout out to you, Lord Rob, for coming through, man, for, for real. These guys would be just fine, like I said, because these guys' games would translate. Remember, the game is a lot easier now. Who's challenging the camera tumble at the rim? Who's challenging him? Yo, my man Arthur Alvaridian coming through with the super chat. Thank you very much. He came with the, the hashtag Trey LeBron. Get them weirdo fans off my Lakers. <laughs> Yo, for real, man. I, I, the, the, the Los Angeles LeBron James fans, right, have taken over the Lakers, man. They've, 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 host, they've, uh, they've taken it over. They're right, they've held them hostage now. The Los Angeles Lakers franchise. Let's go to the next comment, man. All right, let's go to the next one, guys. Oh, this one's good. Once again, same stuff. LeBron, LeBron plays against more skilled players than Mike did. That's what they. That's what the comment says. LeBron plays against more skilled players than Michael Jordan. All right. See, once again, we go back to the same old thing that we've been talking about over the last several weeks, right? People are always talking about these players being more skilled, right? So we done with the '90s. These players are more skilled right now. So this person says that LeBron James is playing against more skilled players than Michael Jordan did uh, back in the day. So let's think about this now. When, when these guys talk about these players being more skilled, once again, what are we talking about here, right? It, it means absolutely nothing anymore. But let's think about LeBron James. LeBron James fans will always tell us that LeBron James has dominated his era, all of these things, right? He's the greatest player of his era. He's been dominating the NBA, all this, got the longevity, all these things. But when we point to LeBron James' lack of overall skills, right? It's there on the video footage. You see the stumbling and bumbling from LeBron James, the turnovers at a high frequency, right? The clumsy play at the end of games, right? And they'll tell us what he's making the right play. But when you think about all these things we talk about LeBron James, this always goes to what we're talking about. LeBron James, if he's not that skilled, how is he able to dominate the most skilled players of NBA's history? It literally doesn't make any sense, guys. It's, once again, an oxymoron. You cannot equate LeBron James to, quote-unquote, skills. But yet, somehow, he's able to dominate the most skilled era with no skills. Think about that. 
But man has no skills. The man drives through the paint right. He's able to get away with the offensive fouls, the physicality that LeBron James can use, but no one else can use the physicality except LeBron James. LeBron James is allowed to manipulate the basketball. Is he not? Is he not allowed to put his hand under the basketball? We've all seen the videos. Is he not allowed to take two or three steps? And his fans will say what? They're gather steps. They're allowed to take a gather step on the catch, a gather step on the release, a gather step off the first step. How many, how many, I mean, what are we doing here? It's laughable, guys. Once again, more excuses for LeBron James, lacking the overall fundamentals and skills. And this is why I always laugh when they say this is the most skilled era, because how is LeBron James able to dominate this era then with no skills? It doesn't add up. Once again, I believe that fundamentals, your core, your core fundamentals of your game is more important than your overall skills. Because once again, these guys talk about skills, but it doesn't equate to anything. It does not. They keep trying to tell us that Kyrie Irving's the most skilled offensive player in the history of the game. And yet the man never led the league in scoring, was never once in the top five or top three in scoring in NBA. Never once. Never once was an all NBA first team but the most skilled player in the history of the game? You see how it doesn't add up, guys? Once again, I'm not trying to knock a Kyrie Irving, but these things don't add up. LeBron James has not dominated more skilled players than Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan dominated more fundamentally sound, tougher players, guys who had more heart, guys who showed up to work, right? Played for a love of the game. He played against true competitors. These are true Hall of Famers, legit all-time greats that played in the 90s. It's laughable when they try to make it seem like they're anything but. Oh, yo, my man, Lord Rod coming through once again, man. Yo, shout out to you coming through with the super chat. He says, no, they just shoot and dribble more. They forgot defense was part of a skill set. Exactly, man. No one wants to give these guys any credit, man. The defense, there's skill involved in playing defense. I told you guys this, man. There is. Half of it is your effort, but there's also skill involved. Your athleticism helps you, and also there could be skills, defensive skills. Absolutely. Now, let's go to the last one, guys. Right, here's the last comment. Last comment for the LeBron James fans say weird things, guys. Here we go. 90s was an era of PED cocaine abusers. Guys in their middle 20s with bald heads. <sighs> Once again, guys, see, this is what I'm talking about, man. This is what I'm talking about, guys. 90s was an era of PED and cocaine abusers. You see how off the deep end they go with this stuff? Guys in their middle 20s with bald heads. This is what we're talking about. You go tell Nate Thurman, who was bald in his 20s, you go talk to Nate Thurman and you talk some trash in Nate Thurman. How about that? You talk some trash in Nate Thurman's face and you talk to him about that. You go tell him he was using PEDs and he was a cocaine abuser. All right? So let's think about this now. He talks about the 90s and people are using cocaine and now they're using steroids. Now, once again, where are these guys getting this from? They listen to idiot Gilbert Arenas. Dumb Gilbert Arenas. These are the guys they listen to, man. The only man in the world who's allowed to make complete false out accusations about people out of thin air and have no repercussions for just being a complete moron, right? And you have these idiots literally mimicking what he said. I never remember anyone talking about these guys using steroids when I was growing up in the 90s. None of this stuff. No suspicions. The Major League Baseball players were under all kinds of suspicions. No one ever talking about basketball players doing any of this stuff, man. None of this stuff was a... No, playing 82 games all of a sudden now is, is hard to do? Playing 82 games now is hard to do now. It's a miracle. Oh, my God. How did these guys play 82 games? They were doing that a long time. That wasn't anything out of the ordinary. It's like these guys can't fathom going to work every day. They can't think, man, these guys show up to work every day and they didn't get paid millions of dollars? To, to, what? They can't uh, imagine these things. That's why when they put the 65 game minimum on them and you had idiots like Draymond Green saying, well, the past errors didn't have that restriction, that minimum. Yeah, no duh, you idiot. Why didn't they have it, you moron? Because they didn't need it. Because they showed up to work. They were actually there. You fools don't seem to get this. All of a sudden now, they're cocaine abusers and PEDU. Which, it can't be both. It can't be both. These guys would have been dead. They would, they, their hearts would have exploded, man. They're taking steroids and they're abusing cocaine. They're all jacked up. But they're playing NBA 82 games in the NBA season? Stop it, man. Y'all don't know anything about uh, the chemicals or steroids. Y'all don't know anything about these things, do you? They were cocaine abusers now. Come on, man. What are we doing here? Once again, they must tear down an entire era. 
an entire era. They're all on PEDs and on cocaine now. The entire era of the 90s. Everyone is. Damn it, you played 82 games, you were on something. John Stockton, be damned. AC Green, damn you too. Kevin Willis, you're a fool. Robert Parrish, ha, I'm laughing at you. Barry Bonds on drugs. Come on, man. These guys are stupid, man. Sounds stupid out here. Why must we always say the weird things? Why do the LeBron James fans always say the weird things, man? Oh, yo, my man Lord Rod once again coming through. Coming through. Kyrie is just uh, Rod Strickland 2.0. Yo, Rod Strickland, man, had the game. A lot of these guys had the game, man, but once again, they don't want to give these guys any credit. They always talk about, like, you know, some of these guys, like, they didn't exist. Like, we never saw these guys. Like, Rod Strickland wasn't there, or Mahmoud Abdul-Raouf wasn't there, or Dana Barrows, or some of these other guys that were running around the perimeter taking these three-point shots. They'll always talk about, like, the big men today, right? They, they were able to shoot, but the big men weren't able to shoot back in the 80s and the 90s. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. They just didn't shoot a billion threes. So, guys, as you can see, man, that, that's all the comments, man. LeBron James fans say weird things. Part 20, I told you guys, it's the 20th edition, man. We were celebrating for the 20th edition out here. I told you guys I was going to do it live, and we did it live. That was what? Eight comments, nothing factual, nothing educational. One guy's telling us that Dikembe Mutombo wouldn't amount to anything in this era, which is completely laughable. We got people talking about asking me if I'm on stimulants. We got people talking about getting my, my unibrow waxed. I mean, what are we doing here, guys? You got one guy telling me that pure hate, he didn't. He never knew pure hate existed until my channel. My channel's pure hate. Have you seen this stuff out there? Have you seen it? I'm telling you right now, the world is jacked up. I've told you guys, this is why you got to hold yourself, man, and hold yourself to them standards, man, because the world is jacked up. As long as you can hold your head high. I told you, as long as you got your health. Keep talking about hate. And of course, we have the, you know, the LeBron James fans that are upset that I'm doing LeBron James videos. So, hold on a second, guys. So, as you guys can see, once again, we were not educated from the LeBron James fans, were we? No, we were not educated. They did not tell us anything. We did not learn anything from them. And they did not, once again, dispute anything in my videos. So, once again, this leads us to understanding, um, once again, no. That when they come here and they say all these negative things and they tell me that I don't know anything about basketball and I'm just hating on LeBron James and I'm just using LeBron James' names to make money or to become famous somehow, right? And they have nothing to say. They have nothing to say. I told you, I, they, I don't know basketball, but then I go to their channel to see if they know what they're talking about. They have no videos. No videos. And once again, you don't have to make videos on YouTube. My point when I say that is this. If you're going to tell me that I don't know basketball, that I don't know what I'm talking about, then you must show and prove. How dare you? You have nerve. You must show and prove. And you guys can't do that. So, once again, that's what I'm saying. I challenge you fools to make a video. Support your King LeBron James. Support him, please. You guys don't want to do that. You guys never want to support your King LeBron James. All you want to do is come to the Michael Jordan channels or come to these other channels who want to continue to tell the facts. And you guys want to cry. It don't make no sense. I challenge you guys. Make a video. Yo, shout out to all you guys in the chat, man, for real. Sorry I didn't read any of you guys' comments, man. I was rambling on there, man. I wanted to get those comments out there. I didn't want this live stream to go too long. I hope all you guys are doing good out there, man. Oh, oh, shout out to all you guys, man, for real, for supporting my channel, guys. You guys are amazing, man, for real. I'm, I'm truly a of all the support, for real, everybody out there. It, this has been great, man. Troy Black, man, what's up? Elizabeth Coolidge, what's up? The Lone Ranger. Shout out to all you guys out there, man. My man, Primetime Henry. Yeah, you had LeBron James want to fight you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They, they, everything gets emotional. If you guys were on the live stream a couple weeks ago, the one dude, <clears throat> they told me he wanted to box me. You know, like, this is what happens, man. That Everyone gets all emotional about these things, man, because the facts... They hurt sometimes, but it's the truth, though. Remember, it's always been about the facts, guys, on this channel. That's what it's always been about. Yo, Lennon Marley, what's up, man? Yo, Frederick Johnson. 
GB, JD Knight. <clears throat> Shout out to all you guys out there for real, man. <clears throat> yeah, Hayden Phoenix, exactly. That's what I'm saying. And this is what I tell you. He talks about I never spent a, a minute uh, uh, on, on LeBron James channels. See, that's the point, right? Like, if, if I'm on YouTube and I'm and I'm scrolling through YouTube and I see a video, or I come across a video that says Michael Jordan can't play basketball. Michael Jordan got no left hand. I'm not going to watch that video and I'm damn sure not going to comment on it. Why would I do that? So that's why it always fascinates me when the LeBron James fans come to my channel when they don't really want to be or listen to what I'm saying. It doesn't make any sense. And I've told you, oftentimes, they do not even listen to my video. They just comment without listening to the video. So once again, you can't then comment on my video if you didn't listen to the video. And also, why are you here if you're not a fan of what I'm talking about? It doesn't make any sense. Because like I said, if you have all that energy for the comments to come at me with the nonsense, with these weird statements, then by all means, please put it on video. Like I said, show me you mean it. Put yourself on camera. Yo, Sickum Savage, what up, man? It's not hate if it's the truth. That's right. He said, if it's not hate, it's the truth. That's right. That Those are the facts. God told you guys. Remember, it's not about me proving to you or, or you, you know, believing that Michael Jordan is the greatest of all time. What I want you guys to understand is that you cannot form a, a really valid opinion based off of lies and narratives. You must base your opinion off the facts, off of reality. Yo, shout out to all you guys, man. Yo, yeah, recipes with Reed, Pistol Pete. Yo, Pistol Pete's skills are truly to me. I mean, you guys, I, I did that video a couple weeks back about Pistol Pete. I didn't even understand or really know what this guy was capable to do with the ball in his hands until I did some research on Pistol Pete. And the, the drills, this man put the work in. He was doing drills like seven, eight years old, man. I mean, it was sensational, man, for real. He, he actually earned them skills, man, and went out there and worked. LeBron James ain't worked on no skills like a Pistol Pete Maravich. The ball hand, and you'll often hear people say that LeBron James is a better passer than a Pistol Pete Maravich or some of these other guys, the Bob Cousy of the world. That's not accurate. It's not accurate. Those guys are greater passers than LeBron James, man. They are. They're true, like I said, man, they're true pioneers of the game. That's right, Hayden Phoenix, he was considered to have the best college career. He averaged like 40-some points a game in college, uh, Pistol Pete. That's right, prime time. The truth shall set them free. And that's why I say, if y'all here for the education, then get the education, man. But don't refuse the education. Because once again, I told you guys, we may not agree on everything. But as long as you know I'm right, you guys know. Yo, shout out to everybody out there, man. That's right, Knowledge One. He said, imagine LeBron playing that 80s Pistons teams. No, it, it wouldn't happen. LeBron James would have been Scottie Pippen out there. He would have had the migraines. He would have had the migraines. He would have been nervous, right? He would have folded up at the end of the game. He would have been looking to pass the ball to George Hill. This is what LeBron James would have been doing against the Pistons, man. He would have been intimidated by guys like Bill Lane Beer and James Edwards. Rick Mahorn, these guys would have intimidated him, man. Because that was their M.O. That's what their job was to do, was to intimidate. It didn't matter if they scored 20 points or any of that stuff. Their job was literally to be enforcers and to intimidate and make you think about going in there and make you think about playing them. And Scottie Pippen was, they said that's what caused the migraines. Playing against the Detroit Pistons, the stress, it was too much for him. That would have been LeBron James, guys. Think about it. He was stressed thinking about the Boston Celtics Big Three. How do you think he would have been, or, or, went, or felt going against the Detroit Pistons in the late 80s with those dirty, cheap tactics, the elbows after the whistle, the grabbing of the ankles, all these weird tactics? Yo, Chai Rider, West Sider, what's up, man? Thanks for coming through, guys. That's right, Kurt Brown. They played, they played street ball out there. They were, like I said, man, they were trying to hurt people. They literally said they were trying to hurt Michael Jordan. They were physically trying to hurt him. I mean, it's crazy when you think about those things, guys. Yo, shout out to all you guys, man, for real, man. This was a celebration of LeBron James fans say weird things. I keep telling you guys, man, we must continue to stand up. This is what we must do. Because all these guys are out here now. Like I said, they got their podcasts. 
right? They try to push us out of here. And we got all these weird fans out here, man. I tell you, they're not real basketball fans. And this is why they won't hold these guys to any standards. And they won't hold these guys accountable. They're not real fans. This is why they're tearing down everything. I told you, the players of today, they can't stand on anything if you're tearing down the history. What are they standing on? What are, what's this saying that you always hear? You always hear people say, I stood on the shoulders of giants, right? The giants that came before you, you stood on their shoulders. That's how you received or achieved a, a high level to, to the high greatness. You have to stand on their shoulders, though. You don't chisel them down and destroy them and then stand there. No, you're supposed to stand on top. You're supposed to stand on top of their shoulders. But you have to earn that. You have to ascend to that. By living up to those standards, right? By taking accountability for what you do and how you carry yourself in your career, the way you earn your things. They don't want to do that. They don't want to do that. Michael Jordan had to stand on the shoulders of Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. He had to ascend to higher than they were. He had to earn that. They didn't tear down Magic Johnson and Larry Bird and then say, yeah, we're putting Michael Jordan there. That's never how it went down. They don't want to do that. Nobody wants to do that. They want to continue to tear these guys down, man. It makes no sense to me. They want to keep talking about how these guys were not skilled. Think about when, whenever you hear these guys break down past errors, when they break down footage, they break it down in a negative light. Everything is negative. They're always trying to look for what these guys are not doing compared to this era or how they're not moving compared to this era. They're not looking at the game in its form, the purity, like I said, the fundamentals of the game. They're not looking at the thing. This is why they won't talk to you about specialists in these eras. They won't talk to you about these things. So you'll watch the game. They'll break the film down and they'll say, look, this guy couldn't dribble or this guy couldn't shoot because that wasn't his job. His job was not to be out there to dribble or to shoot. His job was to do X, Y, Z. Everyone today thinks they're a shooter. Everyone thinks they're a dribbler today. They're not. The only reason that they can even get away with it somewhat is why. Because they bend the rules now. There are no strict enforcement of the rules. So these clumsy idiots can look like they're dribbling. Or they have those skills. When in past eras, these guys did not attempt to do these things that they were not inept at doing. They stuck to what they were good at. Right? That's not what's going on now. Everybody wants to be a shooter. You're not a bunch of shooters. So we have a bunch of idiots out there. And all we're watching now is a three-point contest and a bunch of dribbling. That's what it's about now. Yo, shout out to all you guys, man, for real, man. Animaniac89, what up, man? Yeah, Duncan was a true legend. Duncan was a true legend, for real. Yo, El Migos, what up, man? That's right, a, a Vegelos uh, Dreness. I hope I didn't mention your name, man, forgive me. But you're right, he said a player could get benched if he shot. Those are the facts, man. If a player came down and did something uncharacteristic of himself, something outside of himself... And he came down the court and did that, especially in a key moment of the game. That player is getting yanked. You're getting yanked out the game. Or there's going to be a timeout. There's going to be a conversation had. Or your teammates are going to get in your butt. Someone's going to hold you accountable. Someone's going to chin check you. They're going to G check you. And they're going to be like, dude, what are you doing? That's not your game. Why are you chugging a stupid shot? Right? That's the way the game was played, man. Now anyone feels that they can just chug up a half court shot. They can chuck up a shot behind a three-point line. They can dribble the ball all over the court like a bunch of idiots. That's right, self-research, NBA facts. That's why Tim Duncan always carried himself with class and integrity. Always. This is why he earned the respect of the people. Everyone in San Antonio loves Tim Duncan. All the real basketball fans love and appreciate and respect Tim Duncan and what he meant to the game and how he approached the game and how he carried himself. Absolutely. Yeah, Adam Silver's jacking this league up right now, guys, because he's letting the players get away with whatever they want. Once again, Adam Silver is not holding the players to any standards. He's not doing it. He refuses to hold these guys to a standard. He allows them to do whatever they want. They could do no wrong, right? That's right, TB. Dominique Wilkins, man, the human highlight film, man. That's right, Dominique Wilkins was one of my favorite players, man, growing up back in the day because the man was sensational. Always put on a show for the fans. That's what it was about for Dominique Wilkins, man. Putting on a show for the fans, man. Playing with the love of the game. So shout out to Dominique Wilkins, man. The man who to this day 
still carries himself with the class and the integrity, Dominique Wilkins, man. So shout out to him, man, for real. That's right, Primetime. Am so is not holding them accountable. Yo, for real, guys. Animaniac, you talking about the gambling and stuff? Yeah, man, see, it's, it, that's what I'm saying. It's getting dangerous now, man, because how can you respect the integrity of the game now? This is why people are questioning a lot of the antics of the NBA, man. So, uh, yeah, I feel you guys, man, for real. Yo, Ghetto C, what up, man? The general in the house. Yo, much respect to you, man, for real. Thank you, guys. for Everybody, yo, everyone who came through the chat, man, who came through for part 20 of LeBron James fans say weird things. If you guys missed some of the comments, go back and, and, and watch it later or go back and check it out right now. You know, whatever. It, 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 like I said, they always got something weird to say. No, nothing ever disputed in the videos. None of this stuff, man. So we must continue to educate the LeBron James fans. We must continue to set the record straight, guys. Shout out to everybody. Okay, so everyone came through, man. Hit that like button if you guys come through, man. Anyone that's donated, man. Thank you to all you guys for real, man. I'm going to keep the, uh, the live stream going for a little bit longer. Oh, my man. My man, Cole TM. My man, Cole TM. What up, man? He, I didn't see the super chat. Not just the Pistons. Those 90s Knicks teams. Absolutely, man. For real. The 90s Knicks, man. The early 90s Knicks are a forgotten team. I, I did a, a video uh, on this on the forgotten team series about the early 90s Knicks, man, because they were a formidable team. Now, they didn't win the championships like the Detroit Pistons, obviously. But for me, the New York Knicks had some really good teams, like really good, great defensive teams, man. That 92, 93 Knicks team, those guys were really formidable, man. Like either one of those teams, the 92 or the 93 team was formidable. Whether you're talking about the 92 team that had Gerald Wilkins and Xavier McDaniel, or you're talking about the 1993 team that had John Starks and Charles Smith, right? Anthony Mason, Charles Oakley, Patrick Ewing, right? You know, Xavier McDaniel wasn't on the 93 team, uh, and neither was Gerald Wilkins on a 93 team. But those two Knicks teams were very, very good, man. Because not only were they physical, they were well coached by Pat Riley, like you guys know. And they weren't dirty like the Detroit Pistons. They were legit physical blue-collar team, man, that went out there and made you earn against them, man. They were a legit formidable contender, man. And that's why they were up two games to nothing against the Bulls in the 1993 Eastern Conference Finals. So absolutely, I think those New York Knicks teams would have been a big problem for LeBron James. Because once again, when we talk about the New York Knicks and a Michael Jordan going against those New York Knicks teams, oftentimes it was Michael Jordan having to raise his level of play, coming through in the clutch for the Bulls to get by those Knicks teams, man. You guys know that. So much, much respect to you there for that chat, for real. You guys know the deal, man. Yo, shout out to all you guys in the chat, man. For Oh, you guys came through with the Super Chat. My man, Kobe Bryant Film Room. What up, man? Salute to you. Thank you for coming through with the Super Chat, man. Thank you for coming through the live stream. We were just doing the LeBron James Fan Say Weird Things Part 20. Uh, I finished it a little while ago. So shout out to my man from the Corey Bryant Film Room, man. Keep doing your thing, man, for real. Oh, my man, Recipes with Reed coming through. Thank you. Coming through again, man, with the Super Chat. Thank you once again. LeBron fans think that this era of players created all the moves, the skills. That is why they disrespect the true pioneers of the game. That's right. Recipes with Reed, man, coming through with the facts. Thank you. That's right. They really believe that what these guys are doing today, no one did back in the days. Listen, the volume is different. Yes, absolutely. I give this ever that. These guys do these things at a high volume, the shooting, the dribbling, all this stuff. Absolutely. But there were guys who did those things back in them eras. Like I said, like my man Recipes with Reed said, they're called pioneers. That's what a pioneer is, guys. It's to be the first to do something. Right? To try things. And these were these guys were. They were pioneers. So, once again, we must continue to pay respect to the guys who came before them. Not by trashing them. By being honest and giving the facts. And then forming the opinions. And then comparing these guys. It's ridiculous that I said that these guys act as if none of these guys had skills before this era. Then, then how great could these guys be? You know what I'm saying? So, shout out to you, Recipes with Reed. You're on the money with that. Yo, shout out to all you guys, man, for real. You guys be coming through on the lives. You guys be showing me a lot of love, man. It's truly humbling, guys, because we must continue to do this, man. And I love doing these LeBron James fancy weird things. So, yo, we'll do a part 21, an episode 21, or, you know what I'm saying, whatever you want to call it. 
uh, probably in another couple of weeks. Because once again, I told you guys, we have comments to do these things until probably get to a part 100. It, it, it's, it's really crazy. And it never ceases to amaze me the things that they say. Never ceases to amaze me, guys. Yo, shout out to all you guys in the chat, man. For real, I'm reading some of you guys' comments. Yeah, he said, my man B. Bonds, the players say they don't even sweat. I told you guys, I watched the entire second half of this year's All-Star game. The entire second half, guys. The entire second half. And I do, do not believe that I saw one player sprint the entire second half of that All-Star game, guys. That's no lies. Those are the facts. Yo, shout out to all you guys, man, for real. Posterize, what up? Thank you to all you guys out there, man, for real. Yo, you guys know the deal, man. You guys know the deal. I'm reading some of your guys' stuff right now. <clears throat> Yeah, for real. Owen Smith, what's up? Thank you for coming through. Yo, shout out to all you guys coming through the live stream, man. Like I said, man, LeBron James fan said weird things part 20. Always weird things. These guys, I told you, man, I'm done with LeBron James and his fans. Y'all ain't going to bully us. <clears throat> You're not going to bully us, man. Not going to listen to it. Will not. Because you guys think that, especially now LeBron James is out here with J.J. Redick. They think that we're just going to lay down and we're going to let them push us out of here? Absolutely not. It won't happen, guys. This is why we're standing up. Yo, Tim Nick, what up? He says, hey, Robin, the LeBron fans claim that Jordan never faced a strong team like the Warriors. You're going to make a video about that. I think I've talked about that in some of my videos. Um, but yeah, I could probably do... I mean, we could probably talk about that. I mean, listen, man. The the Warriors, to me, once again, they're overhyped. They're overhyped. And then once again, why? They have to overhype the Warriors to give LeBron James the excuses for losing to these teams. Remember, every one of LeBron James' laws have been excused. And what they've been doing now is making the excuse that LeBron James has faced superior competition in his career. So there's no way he could win. The odds were against him. Once again, what do they say? Oh, LeBron was never the favorite to win. LeBron has to be the favorite to win. And once again, what does that even mean? It means nothing. So when they hype up the Golden State Warriors, who are a great team, no doubt about it, right? But they're not as great as they want them to believe. There's no way on earth the Golden State Warriors are beating the Chicago Bulls. No, there's no way. Because once again, I do not believe in Kevin Durant like that. You guys know how I feel about Kevin Durant. To me, he's frail. He's soft. And to me, if you had that kind of physical defense on Kevin Durant, it's going to neutralize him. It just, it's going to. It's been, pro it's been proven that he can be neutralized like that. So I, I'm going with Chicago Bulls. I'll never get bet against Michael Jordan uh, against any team. And Michael Jordan faced formidable teams. Once again, See, this is where they expose themselves as far as the history of the game. And this is why I say they don't want to give the guys the credit of the history of the game. They can't say that Michael Jordan played against great teams. Why? Because then they're giving him credit for being 6-0. The only way that they think that Michael Jordan was able to go 6-0 because they want to disrespect is that he played against these crappy teams. Oh, well, Michael Jordan 6-0 because he didn't play. Who did he play against? You know, he only played against Charles Barkley and, and, and Clyde Drexler. And Carl Malone and John Stockton and Gary Payton and Sean Kimmel. These guys are nobodies. They're not they're, like they're not first battle Hall of Famers, these guys. He only beat Magic Johnson. Who did he beat? He didn't beat anybody. What are they talking about? Michael Jordan beat these guys in their primes, at their bests. We can't really say the same thing about LeBron James, can we? Now let's think about this real quick. Let's think about this, man. And I might do a video about this. But when we think about some of the people that Michael Jordan beat in the finals, we think about Magic Johnson that say the, the best player on each team. Well, Magic Johnson was coming on back-to-back -back MVP wins, and he was runner-up for the MVP that season. 
So that seems like a pretty prime Manny Johnson to me. Seems pretty damn good. He almost won three MVPs in a row. Michael Jordan beat him in the finals, though. Let's think about Clyde Dresser in 1992. Clyde Drexler, in the best season of his career, at the prime, the peak of his career, runner up to the MVP, to Michael Jordan in 92. Michael Jordan beat him in the finals. Seems like a pretty great player. Clyde Drexler, who led his team to two finals in three seasons, three consecutive trips to the Western Conference Finals. That's what Clyde Drexler did as the leader of the Portland Trailblazers. Let's think about 1993 against Charles Barkley, who won the MVP that season. Charles Barkley in the prime of his career, at the peak here, his best year, Michael Jordan beat him in the finals by averaging 41 points a game. 41 points a game, guys. A lot of people don't realize, I've told you this, the Phoenix Suns and the Chicago Bulls scored the same amount of points, guys, in that finals, the exact same amount of points, guys. The difference was what? Michael Jordan's 41 points a game, guys. 41 points a game. The Chicago Bulls and Michael Jordan beat Gary Payne and Sean Kemp in 96 at the peaks of their games. The primes. This was peak Gary Payne, defensive pay of year award in 96. This was his peak. Michael Jordan and Bulls beat them in the finals. And then we think about Carl Malone and John Stockton in 1997 and 1998. Once again, at the peaks. This was Carl Malone fresh off an MVP win in 1997. Right? So he beat the MVP winner in 97, and then once again in 98, he beats the guy who wins an MVP in 97, and then he follows it up by winning an MVP the following season in 1999. Michael Jordan beat Carl Malone and John Stockton at the peaks of their careers, when Carl Malone was at the peaks of his power. Beat them in the finals. Let's think about LeBron James real quick, guys, and I'm going to end it on this. When LeBron James beat a lot of these teams in the finals, right, we think about him beating, who did he beat in 2012? He beat who? The Oklahoma City Thunder in 2012. When people think about the Oklahoma City Thunder and you look at the names on paper, it might look impressive to you. You say, oh, wow, he beat three MVPs in the NBA Finals. But if we want to be real and keep the context here, he never beat these guys in their primes like that. Right? No, they had not won any MVPs up until that point. So when we think about that, we think about a Russell Westbrook. He had not won an MVP. He was nowhere near an MVP candidate at that point in his career. James Harden was a sixth man. He wasn't an MVP player. So he was not beating these guys at the peaks. He was not. That was not peak James Harden. And we can argue that was not peak Ke or Kevin Durant. Or we can argue it was. And we can argue whether that was peak Russell Westbrook or not. Once again, how old were they? 2000, they were 22 years old. 23 years old, and LeBron James is playing on his stag super team at the peaks of his powers, right? So let's think about that. Now let's think about the following season. They beat the San Antonio Spurs in the finals, LeBron James and the Miami Heat. Once again, who was the best player on the San Antonio Spurs that season? Are you going to say it was Tim Duncan? Okay, was that prime peak Tim Duncan? Nowhere near it. It was still very good, Tim Duncan. He was still an all-time great, absolutely. But this was not peak prime Tim Duncan. This was not 2005 Tim Duncan. This was not 2003, 2007 Tim Duncan. No, this was 2013 Tim Duncan. This was not prime time Tim Duncan. And once again, that was not prime time Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard never even made an all-star team, was never an all-defensive team, had never won a defensive play the year award yet. So LeBron James and I beat these guys to the peaks of their powers. Like Michael Jordan was beating his guys. Let's think about the following the following championship in 2016. Now, this work is interesting. We can argue that Steph Curry was at the peak of his powers. He was on the second half of his back-to-back -back MVPs. Absolutely. But what do people always argue? Steph Curry had a torn meniscus in his knee. He was not 100%. And I've told you, there's no excuses. But that's the only time that you can maybe argue that LeBron James beat another time, a primetime player at their peak in the finals. But once again, this is where it gets funny. LeBron James played on a super team. Steph Curry wasn't. So, kind of takes away from that, doesn't it? And let's think about the 2020 bubble championship for LeBron James now. Who did he beat in that finals? Who was the best player on the Miami Heat? It happened to be Jimmy Butler. Does anybody think that Jimmy Butler is anywhere near the caliber of player of the guys that I mentioned that Michael Jordan faced in the finals? Jimmy Butler's not finishing runner-up to an MVP or winning an MVP in his career. He never would do these things. He's never won a defensive play of the year award or any of these kinds of things. And we must also remember LeBron James was playing on his super team with Rajon Rondo and Dwight, uh, 
Dwight Howard, and Anthony Davis. Right? And it was Jimmy Buller out there with Tyler Hero. And, and Duncan Robinson. Bam Adebayo was hurt. Goran Dragic was hurt. But they won't mention these things for LeBron James. So once again, when you think about that, LeBron James really didn't beat anybody. Nobody in their primes at the peaks of their powers kind of didn't. Meanwhile, Michael Jordan was beating these teams, these players, when they were at their peaks. Winning MVPs, Defensive Player of the Year awards, coming off of winning MVPs, runners up, whatever the case may be. Yo, shout out to all you guys in the chat. I know I rambled on there for a long time, man. I miss a lot of you guys' comments today. Um, forgive me, y'all. Oh, my man Kobe Bryant film room coming through with the super chat. He said, psychological warfare and propaganda. That's exactly what it is. This is what we're trying to combat against, man. We're trying to chop this stuff out of here. Because these guys, they're relentless. They are relentless, man. So shout out to my man Kobe Bryant film room uh, coming through with the super chat, man. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Tim Nick, for real. My man, Tory Bishop, said LeBron is one of a kind. Jordan had a carbon copy of Kobe. Absolutely, because no one wants to copy LeBron James. Of course, LeBron James is one of a kind. He's a one of a kind flopper. I've never seen a superstar player in the NBA's history flop to the level of a LeBron James. We're talking about a top 10, 15, 20 greatest players in NBA's history that LeBron James is always being compared to. I've never seen those guys flop like that. No way. So you're absolutely right. LeBron James is one of a kind. He's a one of a kind, a one of a kind flopper. He's a one, a one of a kind sore loser. I've never seen Jerry West walk off the court early or Bill Russell. I've never seen Will Chamberlain or Michael Jordan walk off the court early, Dr. J. I've never seen these guys do this with such frequency like LeBron James. LeBron James always walk off the court. I've never seen those guys fake injuries. I've never seen that. So you're absolutely right. LeBron James is one of a kind. The reason why Kobe was trying to emulate Michael Jordan is because Michael Jordan was the bar. That's why. It's the same reason that Michael Jordan came in chasing Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. They were the bar. So once again, you guys expose yourselves, man. Yo, shout out to all you guys out there, man. Let's go, Knicks. My man, James Brickner. That's right, man. 8,000, man. It's all because of you guys, man. All the true fans. Shout out to all you guys out there in the chat, man, for real. Yo, my man came through again. My man, Kotim, come through again, man. I don't know, is that K-O-T-M, man? Like, my man came through. Imagine a prime Reggie Miller in this era. Yeah, see, see, once again, someone like a Reggie Miller, man, would be very successful in this era because think about all the space that he would be able to maneuver in. I'm telling you, you people are underestimating the amount of room that these guys didn't really have compared to what they have now and how that would really enhance some of these guys' overall games. Someone like a Reggie Miller where you wouldn't be able to grab him and, and put your hands all over him and try to impede his movement. I mean, if he was able to shoot 10 or 15 threes a game, I mean, Reggie Miller would have... Think about how many threes he would have had in his career if he was able to shoot that way, if the game was played that way. But Reggie Miller did other things. K-O-T-M. My man, K-O-T-M. You got it. Thank you. Forgive me. My man, Kobe Bryant film coming through again. Man, you guys are humbling me, man, for real. LeBron is Scottie Pippen. He's not one of a kind. <laughs> I told you guys, man, that's the problem with LeBron James, man. He's not a real leader. He don't really want to be a leader. He wants to put the blame. Think about this, guy. I told you guys this. A real true leader is always going to take the blame. Always. Even if it's not their fault, so to speak. A true real leader will always take the blame. Always. Always take the blame. That's what a real leader does. It don't matter whose fault it is. There is no fault. A real leader takes the blame. For some reason, LeBron James has never wanted to take the blame. He always wants to read the stats off. He wants to point the finger at this guy. He wants to blame someone else. He wants to play the victim. Something else a real leader does not do. They don't play the victim. A leader's always looking for a solution. How to fix it. What's going on? What's wrong? And what can we do about it? How can we get better? This is what a leader does. This is what Michael Jordan did. He understood as the leader, what do we need to do to get better? And what did he do? They went back to the drawing board. 
Phil Jackson, Scottie Pippen, Horace Grant, all these guys, they went back to the drawing board and they figured out what they had to do to get better. That's what a leader does. He doesn't start playing the victim and, and start crying, woe is me. Oh my, what am I going to do? Come on, man. King Gucci, man, see, I'm, the weirdos always come, the freaks come out at night, my man King Gucci said, Jordan never took the blame, dude, I posted so many videos of Michael Jordan speaking elo eloquently on the microphone post game, I've never heard LeBron James say anything remotely close to what Michael Jordan has said, once again, Michael Jordan gave his teammates his credit, and he always took the blame, so I don't know what you're talking about, man, that's right, you guys know the deal, man, Yo, my man, Story Games coming through with the Super Chat. Thank you. Can't sell Jimmy Butler short. He left it on the court. No, no doubt, Story, yo. No doubt, Story Games. I'm not selling Jimmy Butler short. What I'm saying is Jimmy Butler's not on the level of a Charles Barkley, a Magic Johnson, right? And some of the guys I was saying that he played against in the finals, man, the Carl Malones, the John Stocktons. Jimmy Butler's not on that level. He's a great player, no doubt. I'll never knock Jimmy Butler's hustle or, or his grit or his toughness or anything like that, even though the man do be doing some weird things off the court, man. Once again, even the tough guys of the era are weird. But I'm not, yeah, no doubt. Shout out to, uh, to Jimmy Butler, man. Story games, man. You're right. Yo, shout out to all you guys out there in the chat, man. For real. Uh, once again, guys, thank you so much. for. I'm truly, truly humble, guys. You guys coming out, man. Oh, it's always showing me some love, man. My man said, Red Bull, Red Bull Gaming, you're speaking propaganda against LeBron James. I don't know if that's, is that sarcasm? That can't be that can't be a real statement. If you think that I'm spreading propaganda, because once again, the fact that you say that, it, lo it leads me to believe that you don't have anything against what I'm saying. I'm, I'm telling the truth here. Remember, the truth can't be propaganda, man. And if you don't think what I'm telling you is the truth, then that means that you haven't been watching basketball that long. I'm just giving you the perspective of someone who's been watching the basketball since the late 80s, man. I told you, man. And I remember all this stuff when I was I remember this stuff. We, see, there's a thing. Now, I don't think a lot of people get if they didn't go up at that time. And, I, and I, I'm going to end it on this, guys. I know I went, I've, I've rambled on. When I say that I grew up watching this, the reason why I always emphasize that to these people who don't seem to get it is that we didn't, when I was growing up, I had one TV. A lot of us only had one or two TVs. wasn't prevalent like that. There was no fancy flat screens and, and things of this nature. I did not have a computer. There were no computers. There were no cell phones, websites. We didn't have this stuff. So what did that mean? That meant that we had to actually watch the games. You had to watch them. You had to actually watch the games when they were on TV. Right? I wasn't watching the highlights on ESPN as a kid. It wasn't around like that. So when we think about those aspects, and I say I grew up watching this stuff, this is why I remember it so vividly. I remember it because I had to watch these things. I've told you guys, I'm blessed, man. My father's into basketball, right? So if he has the game on, I have to watch the game. Whatever he's watching, we're watching. And once again, when Michael Jordan was on TV, we watched Michael Jordan. And he was always on TV because he was Michael Jordan. So you had to watch the games. This was not you going on your iPhone later on, watching highlights or going to basketball reference and getting stats. I, I didn't even know scoring titles. I knew none of this stuff. All I knew is what Michael Jordan did on the court. What these guys did on the court. This is the perspective I'm giving you guys. When I talk about these players and what they did, they're specialists. I know that because I watch them. You can't get that from looking at a website or watching highlights. I can only tell you about guys who are specialists of an era because I watched these guys play the game. That's how I knew they were specialists. What their specialty was. What they were good at what their job on the court was to do. So when I watch the games, if I go back now and watch old games, then I know why this guy's not dribbling the ball or why this guy did not shoot the open shot. That was not why he was there. He was playing within himself, within the team. But now these days, people don't get that. So when you try to break it down to them and explain to them, I grew up watching this. This is not what happened. I'm trying to let you guys know that that's all we could do. If you wanted to talk about the basketball game the next day at school, let's say when I was in high school, you had to watch it. You had to watch it. That was the only way you could talk about it the next day. 
You gotta watch the games, man. Today, dudes are not watching the games like that. So they watch the highlights. They watch their favorite player, but they don't really get the whole concept. And when we talk about the game is deteriorated and everyone's just chucking up threes or they're dribbling the ball forever or they're taking free throws, those are the facts. Yo, man, you guys have came through today. Yo, my man JB was here. What up, man? We're done with Adam Silver. My man came through with the super chat. Thank you, man. Adam Silver, man, not holding these guys accountable, not holding them to the standard, man. So shout out to you for coming through with the super chat. Yo, I'm going to end the live stream, guys. You guys have, like I said, man, I am truly humbled, man. You guys have come through all the time. LeBron James fans say weird things. They're going to continue to say weird things, and we're going to continue to do this. So thank you to all you guys out there, man, for real. All the people in the membership of my channel, anyone who subscribed to my channel, anyone who watched my videos, you guys commenting, you guys sharing your stories with me, uh, sharing the info with me. It means a lot to me, guys, for real. You guys continue to stand with me, man. You guys continue to roll with me. I know my videos are not fancy. They're not flashy, man. I'm out here just yelling at you guys, man. But I'm telling you guys right now, man, it's all about the integrity, man. It's all about the honor. It's all about the respect, man. Once again, it's about setting the record straight. Send the record straight, guys. We must continue to stand on these things. We must hold these guys to that standard. If they want to be mentioned with the all-time greats, if you want to be mentioned with those guys, if you want to be mentioned with the Michael Jordans, man, and the Larry Birds, the Magic Johnsons, the Bill Russells, the, the Will Chambers, the Kareem Abdul-Jabars, the Dr. J's, the Jerry West, the Elgin Baylors, the Oscar Robertsons, you know, the Kobe Bryants, right? The all-time greats, man, the Tim Duncans, the Hakeem Olajuwans, if you want to be mentioned with these guys, the Bob Pettits, if you want to be mentioned with the George Mikans, if you want to be mentioned with the Moses Malones, the Shaquille O'Neals, if you want to be mentioned with the all-time greats, then you must continue to hold these guys to that very standard of the all-time greats. That's the key. You guys know the deal, man. You guys know the deal, man.